Now that I've just done that nice opening prayer, I just now remember to hit the record button. <laughs> oh, well, so much for that. So for all of you who are just joining us, welcome to Reiki Call. This is July 2020, and I just did a healing Reiki invocation and forgot to record it. Oops. <laughs> okay, well, let's... Um, Go around now to mute and unmute yourself. You've got a, a little microphone button on the bottom left of your picture frame and also on the tray button at the bottom of the screen. And if you're on your phone, it's uh, star six to mute and unmute. Um, so let's just go around and have you say your name, where you're from, and your level of Reiki, or maybe you're new to Reiki. Okay, let, let's start top left, Lucy. Hi, my name is Lucy, and um, I am a retired nurse practitioner, and I'm in the process of writing a memoir. And I was actually a Reiki master and didn't do it for a while. I did it on family and friends and my patients. But I haven't done it exclusively so enough. So I'm in the process of getting that through. Uh, of what? Of um, doing it more regularly, are you saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Okay. All right. And Allie. Hi. I'm pretty new to Reiki. Um, I'm Allie. I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. Uh huh. Wonderful. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, one of my student teachers, uh, Rebecca Jesus, is there teaching in Omaha. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And let's see, I'm scheduled to come to Omaha to teach November 14 to 15. We'll see how that goes with uh, COVID. It's a lot easier. Oh, yeah. to, it's a lot easier to travel than to Omaha than to hop on a plane and go to Dallas. Okay, welcome Hugh. Okay, now I'm on. <laughs> so, um, so I actually joined the call um, from uh, Annika Kleshinsky, who is my wife. So we just got married July 4th. And congratulations. Uh, thank you. And um, I am very new to breaking. I, I just took a class on Saturday, uh, Reiki One, and uh, got a guide, and it was pretty intense. <clears throat> and I practiced it a little bit since, of course, uh, just recently in the yard outside with a bunny. And, and um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to learning as much as I can. Wonderful. Great. Welcome. And uh, Wendy. Wendy, I'm from New York City. I am a Reiki master. And we can, can you get a little closer? You. So my name is Wendy. I'm from New York City. Um, I've been, I was first initiated in Reiki in the late 80s. And I have been teaching as a master since 95. And teaching both in Europe and in here in the United States. And I worked at the big cancer center, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, and ran their massage and Reiki program for 20 years. Wow. Wow. Okay. So now you all can ask Wendy all your questions. And I, I'll just listen. <laughs> uh, it's only stories, Karen. <laughs> awesome. Welcome. Okay, Lisa. Hi, I'm Lisa Wings. Um, actually, I'm an occupational nurse, and I've been doing Reiki, what, for about four years now. I'm a Reiki master, and um, actually, I do it with my aunt most of the time. And she's not here right now, but that's who I work with most of the time here in Memphis, Tennessee. Yes, yeah, say hi to Nadine. I will. And you're masquerading under a different name on Zoom. No, no, it's under my... Because I have my farm, it's under my farm logo, and that's what that is. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. All right, Helen. 
Hey, uh, I'm Helen and I'm in New Haven, Connecticut. Um, I'm, I was like, oh, I think I'm some sort of Reiki master. Um, I, yeah, I have a, a holy, Usui Holy Fire 3 Reiki master, um, a two mint I got uh, in 2017 and I got my original Usui um, a two mint, I think in 2004. Uh huh. Wow. Welcome. Congratulations. Okay. All right. Um, Crystal, you're muted and I can't unmute you. I don't know if you're still chopping potatoes. Hi. Hi. I finished packing up my potatoes. They won't, they won't be fries, but hey. Um, <laughs> So I'm Crystal Holiday, and I got my Reiki 1 and 2 from Karen on June, I think it was 10th and 11th, or maybe 11th and 12th. Um, but before that, I got a Reiki 1 last January, so I guess I've been doing it for a little over a year now. But since I finished training with you, Karen, I've actually been doing it daily for at least 30 minutes. So Wow! Yeah, oh my I got I you get a gold with, star. I started out with a 21 day challenge and then I just kind of kept it up. So <laughs> yeah. Yay. Yay for you. Way to go. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> Clorinda, welcome. Thank you. Hello. Um, my name is Clorinda. I have, I was introduced to Reiki in 2012. Um, due to having some serious shifts in energy and um, really not being able to figure out what was going on with me and seeking guidance. And so I was initially um, got my Reiki one and two in Texas. Um, and then went, when I moved to Arizona, I ended up uh, training with the Bairds and got my um, Reiki master training. And then um, that was in 2018. And then recently again with Karen doing the online training and so I guess totally, total, I've been doing it since uh, 20, about 2012, 2013. So for a little while. Wonderful. And well, I'm in Virginia. <laughs> Virginia, yes. Yeah, you've moved around. Yes. <laughs> okay. And Rebecca, welcome. Where are you from? If you're muted, you can hit star six and unmute yourself. Okay, now you're muted. Hmm, okay, try the star six again. Okay, I think you're unmuted there. But we can't hear you. Okay. All right. Well, that's, I think we lost her. <laughs> okay. Um, so welcome everybody. So Reiki call is a format where you have the op opportunity to um, have asked questions. We can have some Reiki discussion. I also have a whole list of questions that other people have um, sent in. And um, then we'll end with um, sharing some Reiki with each other. And this format is a little different than Reiki Circle, which is the second and fourth Mondays of the month. And um, on that one, we just send Reiki uh, to each other the whole time, um, usually five to ten minutes a person, depending on how many people um, are with us. So, um, do any of you have any questions or things you want to talk about? All right, well then I'm going to jump into the questions that I have been uh, sent. So someone wrote me and said, is it okay to feel like I don't want to be around people? Uh, in particular, some I feel like don't lift me up or I think are not true friends. I just need a break. 
So what would you all say to that? I think it's okay. I mean, it's only natural. Sometimes mm -hmm. people are just drain your energy, no matter how, you know, how much you are love and light. Sometimes it's just hard to be around people. Mm -hmm. But I mean, yeah, so I think it's perfectly natural. Yeah. But maybe explore, explore why you're feeling that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, some good thoughts. Anybody else want to join in? Well, um, I would say sometimes you have to like ex really examine why you don't, why you're feeling overwhelmed by the other people. Um, and um, I actually, a while back during a, Re a Reiki session with your student, Karen Keg, Karen, who you had recommended to me, um, during the sessions, I usually, um, I feel a little awkward mentioning this because I don't know other people's belief systems, but I usually have um, Jesus and Mother Mary show up in the sessions. Um, and a while back, Jesus, I think, sort of spoke to that issue to me in that, um, I'm trying to remember exactly what happened. It was like um, Mother Mary was saying that it's okay to go forward and help other people. And then Jesus, was like on the other side but saying like at the same time you also like like you need to you need your rest and you have certain limits and you, you have to like respect those limits so it was sort of like paying attention to your own self and seeing where you are in the moment and what you can and can't do in the moment and like respecting that and following that mm -hmm. and then um Another thing Jesus told me to do, because I'm so sensitive and I see so many things on a spiritual level and I, I really needed like some extra spiritual protection. Um, I've, I've only talked to Karen about this really so far, but he told me to, um, to do like a shielding, but um, in a different way that I've ever heard of doing it before, where he just, he told me to put my palms up and then turn around in a circle with my palms up. Hmm. Like I'm painting a wall of Reiki all around me. Oh. And so, yeah, it takes me about like 20 minutes to half an hour to do it, depending on how quickly I'm doing it. Um, but it works. Um, I think that works much better for me than doing any sort of like visualization shield. Like, like, like I've had people say, you know, you know, envision white light around you, like envision like a net around you that keeps out the bad and lets the good in. And I've, I've always had trouble doing anything like that. And this, doing it this way works much better for me. And I've had experiences where like, I felt like I was gonna like, if I told someone how I was feeling, they would probably told me to lie down and rest. And so that I stood up and I, I did the shield around me and I felt like 100% better after I did the shield. Hmm. So. Wow, that sounds good. That's creative and you used Reiki to help you. Yeah, so it's, I think, a way of strengthening yourself when you feel you don't have strength to be around other people. You know, maybe um, it's not so much the, it may not even be so much the people, but something going on with you mm -hmm. sometimes. Or that sometimes it is the people and you need to walk away. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thanks for sharing. Anybody else? This is a good topic. Okay, so I know I'm new, but um, I would be thinking that maybe what you need to do in that situation is remove yourself a little bit and, and work on healing yourself so that you have the right energy, uh, that you manifest that um, with others so that you're ready to re-engage. It sounds like a little rest and space um, and healing. Yeah, that sounds good too. Yeah, you know, particularly um, introverts and uh, impasse can get very drained by people. And so taking the time to rest, rejuvenate, give yourself Reiki, you know, like uh, Crystal was saying, 30 minutes of Reiki a day, I think is a really worthy goal. And uh, Wendy, you want to weigh in on this issue? I found a number of really short ways to protect myself 
and because I was working in a hospital setting and under a really um, under guidelines where production, the number of people we saw a day was carefully counted and evaluated. <laughs> so in those situations, um, just finding a moment of just taking a breath when you're washing your hands, being aware that you're washing your hands and you're washing things off. Um, asking my guides uh, and the Reiki Grandmasters to be the ones to do the work and me just be present. So all those things helped and every person is different in terms of um, how close you can get or how, how, you know, your space that you keep, I feel, between you and that person. And it's, uh, you have to carefully sense that out. And a lot of it is trust. Mm -hmm. And when you make a mistake, pulling back and evaluating what happened, you know, why did I, why did I feel so invaded in that moment? Um, what worked? Great. So trusting in yourself and your own guidance for what to do, calling on Reiki and knowing when to say yes or no to a situation or a friend, I guess. I might just kind of add. Okay, well, let's move on to another one. Um, this is interesting. So someone wrote me that she wanted to know how to send Reiki to her customers in her normal job that are taking forever to pay their outstanding invoices and that it's really hampering cash flow in her small manufacturing company. Um, you know, so what, what to do about that? So anybody have any ideas that they can think of about how you'd use Reiki in that situation? Okay, well, I'll, I'll share. I had a little bit more time to think about it than you all. Um, so I thought several ways. One is um, print out the outstanding invoices and do Reiki over them with the intention of receiving the money owed. Um, or also just visualize all the money owed and the companies who owe it and intend that they're paying their bills on time while you know sending reiki to them you know so blessing them you know with the reiki energy activating your power symbol your mental emotional symbol and your distance symbol uh sending reiki to all of them intending that all of those bills are being paid uh quickly and easily and then the final idea is um, to activate Reiki and meditate and see if um, you could come up with an incentive for on-time payment and a penalty for late payment. So has anybody, you know, faced that sort of thing where, you know, somebody owed you money or owed the company you work for money and used Reiki to try and be your collection agency. <laughs> I mean, the good news is we can use Reiki for any problem that we have. And, you know, that, that's one of my big things that I suggest is whenever we have any sort of problem, we're going to save ourselves a lot of time if we will activate Reiki and do Reiki on it. Um, you know, the times when I have not thought to use my Reiki tools and just thought, well, I'm, you know, I'm gonna just solve this problem. Um, sometimes that creates messes that it takes longer to clean up than if I'd stopped and done Reiki on the situation. I said, I thought those were um, good intentions. Um, 
but I was thinking, I actually have a couple of people who owe me money. And, but I was thinking sometimes you don't even know if them paying you back is actually for the highest good, depending on what's going on. You, like you don't, so um, like maybe like a more vague intention, like, um, you know, may the highest good in this situation manifest just because um, like the two people who owe me money, I, I currently really don't know if it's actually in their best and highest good right now to be able to pay me back. Mm -hmm. so I'm, but, it, but I'm probably not, you know, this is a different, somewhat of a bit different situation with a, with a, you know, a job and someone's livelihood mm -hmm. and for that. But, yeah. Um, yeah. I agree. It's, I think it's different if it's a company then if it's a individual so yeah yeah just on a kind of personal note i've i've always kind of well i guess i haven't always thought this but i've i've kind of come to the conclusion that any money that i have loaned to a friend is better off to be a gift than a loan uh because that introduces a, a layer of dual relationship into the relationship that can be problematic. Okay. Um, does Reiki work if you don't use it daily? I mean, does everybody use their Reiki every day? I don't, don't think so. You know, None, none of us are, are perfect. So what do you all have to say about that one? I, th um, I think it does uh, definitely work. Even if you go the time without using it, um, sometimes it feels like the more consistently you do it, the stronger it feels. But um, I believe that it's always there and working. Um, and once you have tapped into it, you're, you still have the ability to do so, but it just, the consistency makes it a lot different and it makes it a lot stronger, it feels to me. Yes, I will second that, that doing your Reiki on a regular basis will, will make it stronger. Okay, any other thoughts you all have on that? You know, I've had some students come to me and say, well, I really haven't used my Reiki in several years. And I just suggest, you know, start, uh, you know, try it out again. Uh, even if you don't remember the symbols, you still have your Reiki one where you put your hands together and just say Reiki on, Reiki be with me and give yourself Reiki. Um, you know, that always works. Um, and if you've had Reiki too and haven't practiced for a while, then go back and review the symbols and uh, start using them again. I guess I'd just say Reiki doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have the, you have the, the attunement or the ignition. It's, it's there and it's there for your lifetime. It's not going to go away. That's right. And just get back on that bicycle and ride. <laughs> okay, are there any specific Reiki techniques that work for specific body parts? What do you think? I have a comment on this one, and it's just something I've been learning over time recently. Um, I think that the more that I do Reiki, the more it evolves. And so sometimes I have an intention to send it to one area because I, for instance, I may be having pain in one place, and then it's like I start feeling the Reiki traveling to a different place and the, the other tension releasing as kind of like that wasn't the initial location that was causing the problem. I don't know if that makes sense, but it kind of goes where it needs to go for me. And um, sometimes it's intentions are, when I move my ego out of the way and just let it go, it goes where it needs to go. Um, 
And the more that I've seen that, like the improvements in situations, the more I learned to trust that and, um, and let it go where it needs to go. And I feel like it's improved my life and, you know, as a whole, but that's, I mean, sometimes if I'm having a specific pain, I will try to send Reiki directly to that location. Um, but again, sometimes it tends to go to the other places and it's kind of like to let me know that the issue is lying somewhere a little bit more deep um, mm -hmm. than what I might be experiencing on that, that, um, not, I mean, superficial level, I guess. I mean, mm -hmm. Great. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Sometimes the original cause isn't where we think it is. It can be different and, you know, we just don't know. Uh, so that's where the distance symbol comes into play, even when we're giving hands on Reiki to ourself, you know, intending the distance symbol go to the original cause of the problem. Anybody else want to share are there, are there, are there any, uh, any specific Reiki techniques you found that you like for specific body parts? I just, with my, with my legs, I have a lot of trouble with my, and I can feel it energetically with my legs and feet. Um, well, I've worked out, doing is I put um, one hand, like my left hand on the ball of my, or the bottom of my right foot, and then my other hand on the knee. And um, I send Reiki until I feel like the energy system's working again. And then I, I move the hand on the knee to my hip and then let the energy, to like connect the energy current from my the bottom of my foot up to my hip but I, I don't know if that really answers the question but that i've like i've never no one's taught me that i figured that out on my own um great. that i really did do that well great so reiki becomes our teacher yeah. no so i i like the the technique of um like hip to knee and knee to foot mm -hmm. um, and found that that's really good for clearing the energy down the legs. Mm -hmm. um, for example, a lot of times when I've worked with people with hip pain or low back pain, um, the energy in the legs, you know, when I scan it, it just feels thick and staticky. And so that will help to clear the energy um, all the way down the legs. I also experience when I do, I experience this like all the time when I'm doing Reiki that um, it's something that I, I, I knew was okay. So what I'm trying to say is there's this book called energy medicine by Donna Eden, who was born being able to see people's energy systems really clearly. Mm -hmm. And um, she says energy off mostly travels in like figure eights in your body. So I literally, when I have my, I'm when I'm doing that with one hand on my knee and I'm on my, my hand, on my foot, I'll feel a big figure eight, a long figure eight connecting down my leg from, from where the points of my hands are. And then when I move the other hand up to the hip, that, that's what I'm feeling and waiting for those figure eights to start forming in my leg. I can feel them. Hmm. So have, have you ever had anybody like comment and combine Donna Eden's work with Reiki? I'm sure people combine Reiki with all different kind of healing modalities. So, uh, you know, it, it blends well with many things. You can just use your intuition on that. You know, as you were talking about the feed, another one that I was thinking of are headaches. Um, so sometimes working um, when a person has headaches, you know, and they have thick, heavy energy around the head, um, besides the obvious of giving Reiki to the head, you can also give Reiki to the feet, you know, because if you give Reiki to the feet, it helps pull that excess energy out of the head and distribute it through the body, relieving the pressure in the head. I have a headache right now, so. <laughs> yeah, so Reiki the feet, grounding, um, 
one of my colleagues, Jessica Miller, would take the hand, you know, her Reiki charged hand and take it like this, you know, and then just kind of grab out the energy that feels thick or, you know, that's hard to do on yourself. So, you, you know, you can use what I call Reiki hands and scoop through the energy field, you know, to, to clear it like that you know so all all different things that you can do with um reiki you know is there any specific technique that you have to use on a specific body part you know no uh what the, um whatchamacall gasso meditation gasho. gasho i'm saying it wrong would you consider that like a specific reiki technique to a specific body part um, the gasho meditation where you're taking your thumbs into your brow chakra, um, that is activating your, your brow chakra. That's part of the Biosyn scanning to be guided and shown where you need the Reiki. It's also called Reiji Ho. Mm -hmm. You know, Biosyn is when you're scanning. Reiji Ho is, okay, just let my hands be guided to where they need to go and then let them be, you know, directed to a specific area so yeah you could do that the scanning or the the reiji ho so i think you know just try it and see see what results you get you know i i encourage my students to be reiki explorers and uh, try different things and see what seems to work best for you Okay, another question is, I've been teaching Reiki one and two together since receiving Holy Fire Reiki. I've had a request for a student who wants to take just Reiki one and then Reiki two later. Do you ever do it this way? Any reason not to, how much should I charge? So um, the, the licensed teachers for the International Center for Reiki Training are teaching Reiki one and two together because that's the way our organization wants to do it as part of our certification process. Um, and um, also because that is a step towards qualifying people uh, for membership in the Reiki Membership Association. Um, but all other teachers can teach it separately or together according to your preference. And for new teachers, I would suggest you teach it separately because it's a lot easier to get a one-day class together than a two-day class. Um, or you could even break it up into um, a Reiki one, you could break it up into a, a two-hour class over several days. And that way you only have to have a couple hours of the material um, prepared. So any way a person wants to do it is fine and if you're teaching your friends and family members and not giving them a formal certificate you could do an abbreviated version of the class um, you know and not do the whole thing and what people charge for reiki classes you know that's entirely up to each person um, you know whether when you're starting out you know less money and then when you're more experienced more money uh, and you know you can kind of find out what's the going rate for the classes in your area and generally Reiki 1 and 2 would be um, you know some people charge less for Reiki 1 and more for Reiki 2 others just charge the same amount so when do you you teach how do you do it well when I, I taught for the hospital for 20 years so that was um, that's a whole different thing because it's not my it wasn't my organization <laughs> yeah and um so that price was set in some conversation oh, i can't there, hear her anymore there was some conversation so i i and before that um i my first teacher to become a reiki master with her was ten thousand dollars and that was in 88 
Um, and she was very classic in that regard. She charged what the story was about being charged. And, um, and my second Reiki master seemed to price it according to each person at the advanced level. Um, so I've tried to keep it, I'm aware of what people are charging, but in New York City, it's, it's higher and there's still a lot of variation. Mm -hmm. and so I'm trying, trying to be sensitive to who the, per, who the group is or who the person is, their, um, where they are, what, what they want to do with it, and meet them in a way that it's not onerous, but there's some exchange. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Super. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let, let's move into um, doing Reiki. So if you're new to Reiki, um, you can just sit back and receive. And the rest of us, what I'd like to invite us to do is to power up our hands with whatever symbols you feel guided to do. And then intend to send Reiki to everyone who is on this call and um, anybody that watches um, this afterwards. And... Um, also, let's send Reiki to, let's see, I'm going to mute a couple of you because we got some weird noises coming up from somewhere. Um, and then also send Reiki um, for healing all of our current world issues, um, you know, for, for divine justice, you know, for Black Lives Matter, um, for healing of the uh, coronavirus and uh, transmuting it into a higher level vibration that can then return to us as a blessing and any other intentions that you all have. So let's activate our, our Reiki. And I'm just visualizing it. You can also draw it on your hands. And then you can hold your hands like this or like that or on your lap, whatever's comfortable. And we'll just move into a space of silence for about uh, 12 minutes. Sending Reiki to everyone. So we will be sending and receiving at the same time. So just set your intention that you're going to receive from each other too.
And so now we bring this portion of our Reiki to a close and we affirm this healing is continuing on the physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional levels long after our time together today is through. Hmm. And we are grateful for each one of you joining us here. So now we'll just disconnect. We do Kinyoku, which is dry bathing, uh, which is right hand and the left shoulder and brush across your body. Left hand brush, right brush, left arm out, palm up, brush down, brush right, brush left. Or any other way that you want to do it. Intention is what matters, not the technique. So um, I will be sending out an email of this recorded call, minus that opening prayer I forgot, uh, to everyone on the Reiki call list. Um, I'll also be posting it on my website at karenharrison.net and on my YouTube channel at Karen Harrison Reiki and on iTunes. Uh, so that's where you can find this and other archived ones as well as on my website and you, you know, YouTube. And then um, next Monday um, is Reiki Circle again. So that is where we spend the whole time um, giving and receiving Reiki on the format that we have for that is um, every we ask everyone what they'd like Reiki for and then the whole group sends them Reiki for five to ten minutes and that format works well um, for people um, joining late or leaving early um, so it's a little bit different than how we do it in person um, but that's we adapt with uh, whatever we need so also there is my student Facebook group for all of those of you that are um, students of mine. Reiki with Karen Harrison um, is for my students and you can request Reiki there. So I appreciate you all and I look forward to connecting with you again maybe next Monday from 7 to 9 central time okay many blessings and let's give each other some air hugs air hugs love and appreciation to you all okay bye